week week nine I'll just go over week nine real quick I guess was you know it wasn't a fun week for me in general not just because Cleveland pulled that big comeback but I will say that the half hour period like around 4.30 to 5 my time right after the Patriots pulled their comeback against Indianapolis and that just left me going like you know just sitting there going what uh, that that didn't I wasn't happy about that you know how you know how I feel about Indianapolis and New England I thought Indy had that game and half an hour later the Browns they kick that field goal they get their win oh man that was a rough one-two punch for me that was a rough because I was watching both those games and I thought Seattle and Indy had those games and really they should have they had the opportunity to put them away but they didn't and you know it wasn't fun for me to watch and um I didn't enjoy a lot of stuff that happened in nine week in week nine because my picks were pretty bad uh, if you go to my page now I think it says I'm 93 and 53 something like that on the year I'm too lazy to look it up but you know that's pretty good that's better than most experts just for the record um, you know last week and actually this week weren't good for me but you know last week uh, he had that great win by Green Bay that I, I enjoyed that that was great you know seeing Favre hook up with driver with the game on the line for a 60 yard touchdown again um, you know, special. There's something special going on in Green Bay right now. Yeah, they're a good team, but there's something magical there that transcends how good, how many good players you have on your roster. Um, they won. That was probably the highlight of the day for me. Everything else I was pretty much neutral or negative on. Um, Portis absolutely gashed the Jets in the overtime win. Uh, you know, that was something. Um... And also David Harris of the Jets, this inside linebacker coming in for Vilma. He's got like 50 tackles in the last two games for the Jets. That's that's extraordinary. This this kid's a player. I liked him coming out of the draft, and I know a Jets fan who really liked him as well, so he's going to be something. <coughs> uh, Saints threw up 41 on Jacksonville. I can't put my finger on this damn Jacksonville team. They are so inconsistent. Um, they just can't seem to get any consistency going. Um... Breeze just tore it up. Well, I mean, wow, you know. Um, you know, good job by New Orleans. Back to 500 after that win. Um, Bills, you know, that offense is really starting to get things moving. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, if Adrian Peterson's injury is now serious, which actually just happened in the following week, he's got Rookie of the Year because he's playing some real good football right now. Lossman has found his game. Lee Evans is playing well again. Defense is making some plays. Uh, I think they're going to give the Patriots a game in Week 11. Not going to win, but they'll give them a game. Uh, Tampa Bay beat Arizona in a game that nobody seemed to care about. You know, just business as usual, I guess. Uh, Lions absolutely stomped all over Denver. And you know, I like Denver. I, I like the way they run that franchise, so... That sucked. Uh, you guys got to go check out... Um, Sean Rogers touchdown the one where he picked off Ramsey ran 70 yards oh man <laughs> so funny uh, you guys gotta if you haven't already seen that go see it because seeing Sean Rogers pick off a pass and run 70 yards to the end zone that's a rare joy in life that that was great um, obviously Cutler got hurt Ramsey came in and was ineffective um, not a lot I'm gonna say here, you know, just a clock cleaning. Um, Tennessee beat Carolina, and my sleeper pick this offseason is going down the tubes pretty fast. I, I think it's over. Uh, Tennessee pretty much ran all over them. Uh, the Carolina offense couldn't, wasn't ineffective. Uh, not a lot else to say there. Uh, Adrian Peterson, holy, holy wow. I remember I was watching, this was my early game, watching this, hoping he would be able to squeeze out that last four yards he needed to break the record, and they gave him one more carry, and he did it, and what a, what a monster. <clears throat> I mean, this guy is a rookie, I'm, and of course he got injured this week, and maybe that kind of represents his rookie ball, but 
this kid. I can't wait. I can't wait to see him next year when he's got a real quarterback. Hopefully, Andre Woodson. Um, gonna have better receivers. Williamson and Rice will come along, maybe with Bobby Wade. Uh, you know, it's gonna be fun in Minnesota. You know, so many years ago they lost four Super Bowls, and Minnesota fans are still waiting for redemption for that. I think it's gonna come in the next ten years because they're gonna get a real good quarterback. They're gonna land um, maybe some cornerbacks or defensive ends and. This team is going to be a force. Green Bay isn't built to last, and Chicago, you don't know what you got with them, and I don't think Detroit's built to last either, so watch out for the Vikings. Uh, Falcons beat the 49ers, just a couple of inept offenses in my opinion. Alex Smith, it's like I said in my last video, but this was continued to be more obvious the following week. Alex Smith, I think he's a bust. I just really think that the 49ers need to move on from his the mistake they made with him as soon as possible. This was like the only game all season where Vernon Davis did much of anything, so that's good. They're starting to build their offensive game plan around him. And Nice job by Warwick Dunn. I thought he was done, wa washed up, but he's put together a couple of good games now. <coughs> uh, nobody really cared about the Houston-Oakland game. Houston won. I don't even know how or why. And I can't pretend that I really care. You know, just a game. And I could go on for so long about New England and Indianapolis. But, oh, that was frustrating. I watched that whole game. I watched Indy, Indy fight through injuries. They were shooting themselves in the foot. They had that 10-point lead with uh, nine minutes left or whatever. And goddamn you, Reggie Wayne. You're all... You are all Manning has right now. You got no Marvin Harrison. You got no Anthony Gonzalez. Dallas Clark is gimped. In terms of legitimate receiving threats, you're all he's got. And he's got this touchdown that would basically seal the game with, uh, I guess, a considerable amount of time left. And it just goes right through his hands. Oh, that hurt. Because I really do think if he catches that pass, Indy wins that game. But, oh, man. And then, just when you think it's over, New England marches for two touchdowns on Indy like it's nothing after Indianapolis had stopped them pretty much all game. Yeah. Still got a nasty taste in my mouth. Um, Indy, you had it, and now you just blew home field advantage in the playoffs because you're not. New England's not going to lose two or three games this season. They might lose one, maybe to Pittsburgh or Buffalo, but you're not going to. They're not going to lose two or three. It's not going to happen, so they're going to have to march into Foxborough come playoff time, and um, their road to the Super Bowl is going to run through Foxborough. I think they can do it. Um, if you look at what happened last week against New England, they didn't have Tony Hugo. You know, I hate to be the guy who has to say this, but injuries really, really hurt Indy. Um, they didn't have Tony Hugo, and his replacement got destroyed for at least two sacks. Uh, they didn't have Marvin Harrison, and Aaron Moore had played awful. Gonzo, Air, um, Anthony Gonzalez dropped a touchdown before he got hurt. Obviously, Reggie Wayne dropped a touchdown as well. Um, you know, I, I don't want to make excuses. You know, I give New England all the credit they deserve. They won the game. They uh, came from behind and won a game. They had to fight some issues from the referees. I'm not saying the calls were bad, but they were certainly questionable. So I give them credit for that. And Indy blew their chance to secure home field advantage, but I think things are going to be different. I think there's enough evidence to believe that things are going to be different next time these two teams face. So I can't wait for that. To me, that's the Super Bowl. I really do think that it's going to be one of these two teams at the end. And I don't think any other team can win the Super Bowl, barring, you know, a cataclysmic upset. Uh, last two games, Dallas beats Philly, you know, just a pretty good clock cleaning. Romo had an amazing game. Owens finally got to le lit up, light up his old team. Um, you know, McNabb threw a couple of picks. He's actually been having a great statistical year and hasn't been easy to pick off, so I think that's worth something. Um, you know, Dallas just knocked him clean out. There's nothing else to say. I don't got much else to say about Pittsburgh and Baltimore either. McNair is old and washed up. I'm ready to see Kyle Bowler or Troy Smith. Um, you know, Ben obviously lit 
the Ravens up. He didn't throw very much, but when he did, it was almost always in the end zone. Uh, another clock cleaning, another divisional rival game where one team just gets embarrassed. And uh, I don't think the Ravens... I think the Ravens are pretty much done at this point. They got no quarterback. So that's all I'm going to say about Week 9.